Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna, and the continuing effort to get this uh, GP30 Rec rebuild model done. Um, in the last video at the end, I said the next time you see this model, it would be painted, and it's painted. So, um, let me go over a couple of things, and then I'll bring the camera over here and um, um, uh, give you a closer look at it. So, the paint is Tamiya semi-gloss black, thinned one-to-one. -one. So, one part paint, one part thinner. It goes on super thin, so you have to put a couple of, you know, passes to get the full blackness. But it goes, when, it's, when it um, um, lays down, I use a Mr. Leveling Thinner with it. And when, it's, when it levels out and lays down, it's really thin coat. It dries beautifully smooth. So, um, and I shoot that at about 18 PSI. 18 to 20 PSI. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to go over, or actually the only thing I really want to go over, is um, the two EMD GP28s. I've put those aside for right now. I put them back in the box. The um, On the dynamic brake hatch where the um, exhaust stack would be for like on a GP35, there is a flat plate, and I think you've seen that in the video, previous videos and when I show the... Uh, GP28 shells. Well, that flat plate, um, what I had to do was cut the um, Cannon and Company exhaust stack off and then fill that opening. Well, that opening just, it was always visible under the paint. No matter what I did, the puttying, the sanding, it was always there. That's one of my Achilles heels is the ability to... Um, basically fill a joint and sand it without the joint being visible anymore. Sometimes I can get a really nice job done like that, but for big areas like that um, portion on the um, on where the, the bolted plate goes down, everything I did, it just got worse and worse. So I stripped it and tried it again. And got, it, I just could not get it to um, set um, to be invisible. Um, in, in one instance... I was able to get it almost invisible, but if you look at it in light at a certain angle, it was like, oh my God, there it is. So I tore those off and I'm going to design some photo etch for that. And um, so those will be put aside for a while until I get that photo etch. Probably in the next couple weeks, I'll design some photo etch for it and a few other things that I want to do. Um, so I'll get those done uh, a little bit later. But this model, is definitely going to be um, finished here soon. So let me get the camera moved over here and we'll get a closer look at it. All right, so I got the camera in its spot and here's the model all painted black. Now I did have some blemishes in the hood up here, a joint up here, a little bit here and a little bit over here and a little bit on the side. So I filled those prior to putting the black on, sanded them out and they came out okay. I'm fine with that so you can see Here's the um, path box side. I had to do a little bit of filling right up here where the atherin part met the um, block of styrene that I had cut for it and all that. So that's all taken care of there. So right now it's got the black paint plus a um, clear coat, um, uh, all clad aqua gloss clear coat over it. Um, you can see I have the, let me zoom in here, now the problem with uh, black models is everything's black. So let me get this zoomed in. Will it focus? There we go. So I've got the fans in, I've got the grills on, and um, in here with the light you can see the, the fan blades and stuff. And again, I didn't paint the fan blades and hubs um, dull aluminum. And the reason for that is because this is a repaint. So they would just go in and just paint everything. You know, whatever got in the way got painted. So that's why that on a on a new build like the Jeep 28s, those will be dull aluminum and they turned out beautiful. Oh my gosh, those fans. Uh, the, I use that all clad dull aluminum. Oh, put some gloss black on the fans. Let that dry and then put the dull aluminum over it and it's just beautiful, beautiful paint. Anyway, so this is basically it and it's ready for decals. So the next time you see this model, it'll have decals on it. So what it's going to be, it's going to be basically a full pen central paint. 
I was thinking about doing the grab irons in yellow and stuff like that, and like um, a CPT and C locomotive delivered from the factory. But then I was thinking, no, I'm gonna go with the the drab Penn Central look. I know that on the sill unit, um, I did the uh, yellow on the blower duct, but that's like a special thing that basically the paint shop did for the safety of the crews and stuff like that. Walking there. But um, for the grab irons and all that, I just left it in um, Penn Central, the Penn Central look. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Okay, so like I said, all that's left is a decal. So it's going to have the worm on the back. It'll have the worm on the long hood end and on the low hood end. It'll have Penn Central across the doors, but it'll have a CPT and C logo where typically where the Penn Central numbers would go. So it'll be a logo there, and then the road numbers will be right up here on the on the um, non-dynamic brake hatch. So that's how that's gonna that's gonna be. And then of course there'll be some of the safety sticker, you know, the engine start switch, um, danger, 600 volts, and those kinds of things, the fire extinguisher stuff. So you don't have that kind of stuff. So that's basically it. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting the decals on. I'll probably do that tomorrow, get started on that tomorrow. Um, once the decals are on, I'll shoot it with a gloss to protect the decals. I'll let that dry for a few hours. Then I'll shoot it with a satin varnish and then um, all the glass you know, tape on the glass and all that comes off. Oh, and I did already put the uh, number boards in the back. So I just have to decal the number boards. There'll be white numbers. And um, other than that, that's it. That's what you see. So this model should be done here fairly quickly. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll end this video after it's all the decal work has been done. And um, the next uh, video would be, not the video in this series, but the next video would then be um, finishing the model. But right now we're in the paint and decal portion of the video. Okay, so everything's, well, not everything's done. I still have to assemble it, but the hood is all done. It's painted, decaled, and I've got the satin varnish on it. So what's left for the hood is to take the tape off of the windows. Then all that's left is to assemble everything. So to assemble everything, of course, <clears throat> I have the windshield wipers I have to put on. I've got the class lights that need to go in. I've got the, um, on the sill unit, I have the MU hoses that have to go in. And when I put it all together, I need to complete the, um, the uh, stanchions, or not the stanchions, the handrails that go up to the cab. Now these stanchions seem to lean in a little bit. And what I had done, <clears throat> I probably shouldn't have done that, but I did. But when I built this deck, on the prototype, the <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the side sill steps out anywhere from a half an inch to an inch from the blower duct. So I go, oh, that'd be cool. I should go ahead and do that. So I cut the duct in about ten thousandths, but that causes the handrails to not have a solid post or a solid surface to sit on at the top so it causes them to lean in a little bit. So I need to to do something to keep those straight up. So I'll work on that and see what I can do. So anyways, that's all that's left to do and then of course assemble it onto the frame and uh, get the, everything's wired up. I just gotta wire in the lights to the pads on the on the boards so that is where it's at right now so I'm really really happy with the way the hood turned out <clears throat> so the next time you see it it'll be all buttoned up everything will be on and it'll be operational well folks one thing led to another and she's all done um, the sound system works great um, the lights are okay the headlight isn't as bright as I would like it to be um, I, I'm using the, the resistors that are on the board and they're not as great as like on my RS-11, I used a 500, 
um, ohm resistor, I think it is, or no, it was a 1.1K resistor. That's what it was. And those lights are really bright. I really like them. The Pennsylvania GP35 uses the resistors on the board, and they're good. And they're not as bright as the RS11, but they're not as dull as this one. Um, but I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm not a big light person anyways. I mean, I like the lights, but they don't have to be, you know, perfect or whatever. So I'm happy with it. That's all that matters. So anyways, she's all done. Let me hold it up here. So there's that side. And there's that side. So I will do some still shots like I did with the uh, the um, Pennsylvania 35, and I'll put them at the end of the video. All right, now that the locomotive's done, in the I'm sorry, in the last um, video that I said it was done, it was almost done. I forgot to put the um, the wind deflectors on, so those are on. So now the locomotive is complete. I did take the shell off, and I put in a one uh, a one K ohm resistor for the front and rear lights and it brightened them up a little it brightened them up enough that I was happy that when I look straight on I get that little starburst effect and that's what I was looking for so it's not as bright again as the RS11 but I like it and uh, it works so let's get this started up I'll be quiet and you can hear everything that's happening All right, so that's basically it. I think I still need, I need to tune the sound a little bit, um, maybe bring the volume down um, and maybe the bell volume up just a little bit. But overall, I'm really happy with it. It has a, um, a 567 um, motor sound in it, a non-turbo 5, uh, yeah, 567 in it because it has been deturboed, so it's essentially like a... Uh, um, well, a D-Turbo GP35, which is a GP28, which has a 567, but it's I think the GP35 and is a 567D3 or something like that. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyways, I like the sound, the grumble to it, and, and, and stuff like that. So that's basically it. Now it goes back into my collection over here. You can see the RS11 and the Pennsylvania GP35 over there. I think these are going to be my next project, these RSD-15s. Not sure yet. I got a couple of RSD-12s here. I know they're not 100% RSD-12, but I like the way they look, and they're going to be part of my collection. So this guy's done, and I can finally move on to the next project. Oh. All right. Well, there's another locomotive under my belt. So that makes four for the year. I got the um, RS-11 done. I got the Pensy GP35 done. I got the Erie Lackawanna GP35 done. And I got this um, 
um, GP28 rec rebuild, GP32 with GP28 done. So that makes my goal for the year. At the beginning of the year, I had put down that I wanted to get four locomotives done. Um, originally, I said GP38s, but just changed that to just four locomotives, so I've got them done. Um, maybe I'll get another one done before the end of the year. I don't know, but um, we'll see. And I definitely reached my freight car goal for the year. I only wanted 20 done, and I got over 150 done, so um, that was pretty good. Um, anyway, um, so that takes care of that, and um, I need to decide what my next project is going to be. I've got, like I've mentioned before, I've got some time in, in over the Christmas break um, that I could possibly, if I worked hard enough, maybe even get one locomotive done before the new year. Uh, that's a big pass. That's a big may, may. I give that about maybe a 30% chance. <laughs> anyway, I really like this uh, model. At first, I wasn't liking it because some of the things that happened with it and that I was working on. Uh, the handrails could be better. Um, I don't know what it is about when you do your own handrails that they, when they come out to the cab, they always want to come out wider. I, I don't understand that because the stanchions are the same uh, as a regular model. And when you put like when you put the Cotto stanchions on, the handrails don't want to come out wide. So I don't know what it is, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So. I did, um, um, like I said, I did change the resistor in it. I like the lights the way it is. Overall, I'm really happy with it. One thing on this locomotive, I will never let anybody touch it because a couple of things on it, and if you're not the one that built it, you don't know how to handle it. That 36-inch radiator fan... When I was putting the decals on it, I already once accidentally crushed it down. So I was able to pull it back out and get the shape back the way it was. And I was like, oh crap, what the what the hell's going on with this? So it's those kind of things that I do sometimes is I don't pay attention to where my hands are, you know, handling the model and I'll break something or I'll put a fingerprint on something. And like I did with this one, I was holding the shell and my finger just kept going down. I'm like, what? Well, oh crap. And then I had to pull it out and but it looks great now. Everything's pulled out properly and stuff like that. And the handrails, they are glued together in a couple spots. So if you if you grab the model and you you know squeeze it a little bit on the handrails, it might break that joint and stuff like that. So this is one of those models that, you know, and it's for you too. You built it, I built mine. I know how to handle it. I know where the delicate parts are, and I will, and I know where, you know, I can pick it up and, and stuff like that. And you should treat your models the same way. Don't let anybody pick them up. And if you're at a club and somebody's get, getting ready to reach in, and you say, "Hold on there, partner. Don't pick that up." And you tell them, "It says you didn't build that model, and I appreciate you wanting to help, but I'm the one that built it, and I know where I can pick it up from, a pickup point and stuff like that." So please. Take care of your models, and they'll take care of you. <laughs> I doubt they will, but anyway, just have that attitude, and you know your models will last a lot longer. So, I hope you enjoyed that series. Um, I really like the look of this locomotive, the way it turned out, and I'm really, really happy with it, and looking forward to operating it. So, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me again in my next build.